welcome to today's webinar. I'm Skylar with Lean Frontiers, and we are so excited to welcome Patrick Adams. You will receive a link to view the recording. Please allow us 24 to 48 hours to process the webinar. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our facilitator for today, Patrick Adams. Patrick is the author of the best-selling book, Avoiding the Continuous Parents Trap. Patrick is also the host of the Lean Solutions podcast. He is an internationally recognized leadership coach, consultant, and professional speaker, best known for his unique human approach to sound team building practices, creating consistency, and enabling empowerment. Patrick will also be presenting at the Virtual Lean Leadership Summit in just a couple of weeks. With that, I will hand it over to Patrick. All right. Thank you, Skylar. I appreciate it so much. Uh, I'm glad that you threw in that little blurb about the, the upcoming virtual summit. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, make sure you do because it's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, love the work that you guys do, Skylar, at Lean Frontiers. I see Jim's on as well. Uh, amazing work in just developing and building the, the Lean community. So thank you for the, the, the amazing work that you guys do. Uh, and thank you for the introduction. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, absolutely. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to flip here to the next slide. All right, there we go. So uh, early in my career, uh, I had the opportunity to work for two companies. Now, these two companies uh, were very similar at the surface level. So if you walked into either of these companies, you would see very similar things, right? Similar artifacts. Uh, you would see lean posters on the wall. You would see tape on the floor. You would see maybe some, some process mapping in the conference rooms. Uh, you would see similar KPIs, safety, cost, quality, delivery. You would see a lot of the same things at the surface of these two companies. Uh, also two companies, very similar in size, very similar in scope, uh, but there was something that was very different about these two companies. And what was different about these two companies was the culture. It was what was underneath all of the surface level things, right? So one company, uh, the company that I refer to in my book as Company Continuous Improvement is the company that uh, had an amazing culture of continuous improvement to the core. Uh, the, the company had amazing sustainment of their continuous improvement activities. Their KPIs were through the roof. Uh, just a, a amazing work that this company was doing, right? And then the other company, which I refer to as Company Continuous Appearance, uh, had a very toxic culture a culture where people struggled to work. They didn't have sustainment of any of their activities. Uh, their KPIs were in the dumps and people just literally hated to work there. There was a ton of turnover. It was a, 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 just a, a very, um, a, a company that was really struggling. Um, and again, if you looked at these two companies at the surface level, you would, you would see very similar things, right? So because I had this opportunity to work at these, these two very similar companies, again, similar at the surface level, um, I was able to take away and learn some pretty amazing things about uh, what it means to have a true culture of continuous improvement. Now, one of the things that you'll notice uh, in, in my book and, and when I do presentations is I lead with questions. Questions, right? I don't have chapter uh, headings or titles. I have questions. And there's a reason why I have questions. And in working with people, a lot of companies or leaders would say to me, well, why don't you just give us the roadmap, right? You've been at a company that has been very successful at developing a culture of continuous improvement. So just give us the roadmap. What are the 10 steps to developing a true culture of continuous improvement? Give us the roadmap, the five, the five steps, the five, the direction that we need to go. The problem with that is that when companies try to adopt exactly what another company did, they will fail, right? The, the key is to be able to develop a learning culture, a culture where people are asking the right questions, experimenting, trying, and developing solutions that are right for them, right? Because what was right for one company may not be right for your company. You're in a different industry, a different time, uh, a different team, right? Things are different, a, a different product, a different customer, different suppliers, right? So, so you, your solutions to your problems, which are also probably different than other companies, right? Uh, the solutions are also going to be different. 
Uh, so what I try to do is I lead with questions. And one of the things that I want to mention too is uh, John Shook actually, uh, uh, and for those of you that are not familiar with John, John was uh, uh, took was uh, part of, uh, he was the first uh, American to go and work with Toyota and, and actually was part of the NUMI, uh, develop, bringing NUMI together, which if you haven't heard of that, I don't have time to cover all of that today. Uh, but if you, if you haven't heard of NUMI and John Shook, I would go out and, and just uh, do a little bit of research because you can learn some amazing things. But one of the things that John said, is he said that lean management itself is not as much about providing the right answers, but very much about asking the right questions. Okay, and that's important. Asking the right questions is important. So I want to lead and talk today about leadership because uh, leadership is such a key point in developing a true culture of continuous improvement. Um, and and if, if you don't have the right leadership in place, if you don't have the right behaviors in place, if your leaders aren't spending time at the right place, then you're going to fail. You're, you're not going to develop a true culture of continuous improvement. And so the first question uh, that I want to talk about, the one question that I want to talk about today is where are your leaders spending their time? Where are your leaders spending their time? Ask yourself that question. One of the things that I do when I meet with leaders for the first time is I like to uh, take a look at their calendar, right? I want to look at their calendar and see, you know, what are your priorities? Where are you spending the majority of your time during your day, right? And uh, many times what I see is meeting after meeting after meeting. And my first question is, how much are you getting out to the Gemba? How much are you getting out to the place where the actual work is being done, right? I have to ask that question. And, and so we start to have this conversation about, well, you know, if it, you know, I get really busy or I get stuck in here or, or this and that happens, right? And you have to really take an honest uh, an, an honest uh, answer to this question. You have to, you have to really ask yourself, where are you spending your time? Um, and, and what, what, why this is so important is because of the culture, right? Remember when I talked about the two companies that I, that I, uh, that I worked at, that I had the opportunity to work at the one company had a, a true culture of continuous improvement, right? Where the other, the other company had what I call this culture of continuous appearance, right? At the surface level, they, they appeared to have it all together, right? They had all the artifacts, all the tools, the, the things were in place that you would, you would see at, a, at, at what, you know, quote unquote lean company, right? But underneath the culture was the problem. So when I ask about leaders and where they're spending their time, I always have to go back to culture and I have to, I have to uh, point out the fact that culture is really an output of the inputs, an output of the inputs, okay? So what I mean by that is the culture is the, the end, the, the deliverable. It's what comes out of the, the things that we put, put into it. So the things that we put into it are the, the behaviors, the beliefs, the actions, right? Where leaders are spending their time. These are all inputs that create the output that becomes your culture, okay? So if, like the company that I talked about, company continuous appearance, if you have the wrong inputs, then you're going to get the toxic wrong culture, the, co the type of culture that's not going to support a, 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 a continuous improvement environment, right? A lean environment. So, so the, those behaviors, those actions, those where your leaders are spending your time, those inputs are so important in developing a true culture of continuous improvement. So what are the behaviors, the actions, and the, uh, the, 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 the where leaders should be spending their time? What are those things that are going to create the, that culture of continuous improvement? I love this, this, this quote uh, that, that says, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results, right? This is the definition of insanity, right? So I, I work with so many leaders who, who say, I don't understand why we can't change that, the culture, why we can't sustain the improvements that were, you know, we had this Kaizen event, or we, we, we tried to create this model area and we, you know, we put all the right things in place. And then, you know, this fire happened over here and we ended up over here. Then I came back and it was all, it all fell apart. Nothing had sustained itself, right? You've heard of flavor of the month activities, right? Or flavor of the month type uh, events or things like that, right? Things that happen and then just go away. 
Well, a lot of times that, that's what's happening in a culture of continuous appearance. So again, if we're talking about culture, which is the output, right? We need to look at those inputs. Many times leaders are trying to change the output. They're like, I, gotta I, gotta, I need a different culture. I gotta change the culture. I gotta, I gotta take this culture out and put a different culture in. That's not the way it works because culture is an output. You have to, you have to move yourself over to the inputs and you have to look at the inputs. If you keep having the same behaviors, the same actions, if your leaders are spending time in the same place, then you're gonna get the same output, right? The same behaviors are going to be, be happening. The, 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 you're not gonna be sustaining. You're, not, you're, you're gonna have a toxic culture. Your turnover is gonna be through the roof, right? It's insanity. It's complete insanity, right? So if we want a different output, then we have to be willing to change the inputs. And we have to work hard at changing those inputs, right? So what are those things? What are those actions? What are those behaviors? Where should leaders be spending their time? What's the answer, right? And, and that's the big question. I'm sure all of you are asking. So I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm actually going to zoom in on uh, my little uh, table here that I have behind me. Make sure all of you can see that. Good, good, good. Okay. A uh, little activity here. So what we see here is on this side of the, the line over here, this is my company continuous improvement, right? This is the company that I talked about earlier that I worked at that just had amazing results. Their, their, their turnover was, was low. Their KPIs were amazing. Uh, they had an amazing culture of continuous improvement. That's this company over here. Now this company over on this side of the line is company continuous appearance. This is the company with the toxic culture uh, that, that had high turnover, KPIs were struggling, uh, lots of problems, right? Now, I want to show you what I have here. This is, this is an important bottle right here. This is a day in, the, in, a day in your shoes as a leader in, in one of these organizations, okay? This is a day in your shoes. I want you to imagine that. This is a day in your shoes, all right? Now, this right here, this bottle is full of all of the busyness that happens throughout the day. So these are, these are the non-productive meetings. These are the, the unimportant tasks. These are the meetings that, that don't pertain to you. How many people have been invited to meetings and you're like, why am I even here, right? Or what about being CC'd on a, a, a reply all email and having to read through emails that don't have anything to do with you, right? What about the firefighting, right? That fills your day. That's the busyness. The firefighting that fills your day too, right? So non-productive meetings, unimportant tasks, uh, all those things that, that fill your day, the busyness. Now this one here, these are the important stuff with a question mark. So I say important stuff with, uh, with quotations, okay? The important stuff. Now, what I want you to think about here are, these are the other meetings that you get invited to, okay? These are the, the time that you spend reading emails, and you come into work and you have hundreds of emails that you have to catch up on, right? This is maybe some of your desk work, you know, sitting at your desk trying to catch up on things, right? You come in, in the morning and you have a desk full of uh, approvals that need to happen or, you know, signatures that need to, to happen on paper or whatever it might be, right? Maybe these are your sales calls or, or project planning or, you know, maybe more meetings and then more meetings, right? These are all of the important things that need to be done throughout the day, right? Important stuff. Okay, now this one, this one is really important because this one is the activities that actually drive change. Okay, now these are the activities that we want to key into because these are your gamble logs, right? When, you're, when you as a leader are actually going out and spending time at the place where the value add work is being done, right? You're, you're, you're coaching, you're working with your team members to identify problems in the area. What are your gaps? You're doing some root cause analysis. You're attending tier meetings. You're leading tier meetings, right? You're, you're, maybe you're doing some personal development. Maybe you're, you're reading a, a, a really great lean book or you're listening to a really great podcast, right? Some personal development activities. Maybe you're doing Kaizen activities, 
right? Maybe you're out doing some two second improvements, or maybe you are leading or facilitating a Kaizen event, right? Or being, you're part of a Kaizen event. Uh, maybe you're out auditing for sustainment of improvement activities. Uh, maybe you're, you're, as I said earlier, maybe you're working on a problem and you're actually working through a, an A3, right? These are the activities that are actually going to drive change in your organization. So that's what's represented here. All right, so first, first thing I want to do is I want to show you my experience in working at Company Continuous Appearance. All right, Company Continuous Appearance. This is my calendar. All right, at Company Continuous Appearance, what happened there with all of the leaders is the busyness would come into play, right? The busyness, all the busyness. Remember, these are the non-productive meetings. These are the unimportant tasks. These are the meetings that don't even pertain to you that you have to go to. This is when you get CC'd on emails and, and uh, have to read through stuff that, that doesn't pertain to you. Maybe it's firefighting. You spend your whole day firefighting, right? Those are all the busyness, okay? Then we get to some of the important stuff, right? Important stuff with question marks. Is it really that important? Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but the important stuff, all right? So let's, let's throw those in here. Remember the important stuff are the meetings, Meetings and uh, emails. That's the word. Appreciate the, you know the impact of that assassination from the conspiratorial perspective, from people being called conspiracy theorists for thinking there was something more to the story than what the government was saying. Uh, all right, you're muted. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, Jim, good. I'm sure what happened to them. Skyler, am I still? Still, you guys still hear me? Yes, Patrick, you're still good. Okay. As well as one hurts. All right. So this is the this is the the uh, important stuff with a question mark, right? Again, all of that stuff happens. The emails, the network, the 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 project planning, the the meetings, the more meetings, the more meetings. Okay. Now it's time for some of those activities that actually drive change, right? Now that we filled our day with all of the busyness, the important stuff. The you know important stuff. Now it's time for activities that actually run the game, right? So so the demo one off, uh, the the tier meeting maybe that's that's getting pretty close. That's about all we have time for. So today we we were able to attend the tier meeting and maybe we were able to do a demo walk this week. I don't really know. Maybe we have time for that. But all, everything else, personal development, Kaizen uh, activities, you know, root cause analysis, it's all still here. We didn't have time for it. So, so we go into the next day and we, we start our day again with all the busyness, right? A day in your shoes is completely full. All right, now I'm going to go over to company continuous improvement. All right, here was the difference at company continuous improvement. Company continuous improvement started by prioritizing the activities that drive change with their leadership team. All right, so... The gender walk were part of their leader standard work. It was done every day. They were meeting and attending peer meetings every single day. They had a lot of time for coaching and training. They had personal development built into their schedule. Time to read books, to, to listen to, to podcasts. They, they were actually leading kinds of activities. They were, they, that was a priority for them. Number one. Okay. But it came all the important stuff. There was still time for this stuff. There was still time for, for the meetings. There was still time for the email, for the desk work and all that stuff. There was still time for all of that. I got to get it all in here. Make sure we don't miss anything. We don't want to miss any of those meetings. And then more meetings and more meetings. All right, we got them all in there. Okay, so then, of course, there is time for some busyness, right? You're, you're going, that, that, those things aren't going to end. You are going to have some of the unimportant tasks. You are going to still get CC'd on emails. You're going to get invited to meetings. Now, ideally, we want to try to eliminate some of those, right? But here's the reality. Look at your day. Look at your day. It, it's, you, you have room for everything else. And you're able to actually relax a little bit because guess what's happening? When you have the Gemba walk happening, when you're doing root cause analysis, when you're, when you're spending time at the gamble, where, the place where the work is being done, guess what happens to all the busyness, all the issues? They start to, they start to go down, right? Your schedule starts to open up. 
you start to have more time for the things that actually matter. And I want to go back to my, my uh, PowerPoint here. All right, there we go. So there's an important, there's a reason why I wanted to show you this activity. Maybe some of you have seen it before, right? But I want, what I want you to do is I want you to walk away with some really important points today. It's things that you can apply right away. All right. So what are your next steps coming out of this very short webinar? What are, what are, uh, what are your next steps? Now, one of the things that's important is that you set expectations. Right? When we talk about what's important for leaders in our organization, if we want to change the outcome, the culture, then we need to set clear expectations around behavior, around the actions of our leaders, um, and around expectations, around, around um, where they're spending their time and what, what's expected, how much time they're spending on certain things. Right? If we know that root cause analysis is going to allow us to reduce some of the firefighting, then let's prioritize it and let's actually spend some time doing it, right? So you need to set the expectation. You need to enable action, enable action. Now, now enabling, it, it sounds very simple, right? But once you've set the expectation, then you have to enable your leaders and your teams to actually take action, right? So when they do identify a problem, they need to have the freedom to experiment. I was just at an organization today that told me they give every single person on their team one hour a day to, to work on improvement ideas, suggestions, and root cause analysis. One hour. So directly after their, their tier meeting in the morning, they spend an hour solving problems. Pretty amazing, right? I mean, that's huge, right? Not all organizations can do that, but they're enabling the action. And that's, and that's key, right? The third thing is we want to sustain the results. Right? This is one that's, that is, is missed many times with organizations. They set the expectations, they enable the action, but they don't sustain the results. Um, and this can be a big problem. Right? So there's certain things that you can do uh, as an organization, as a leadership team to help sustain those results. Now, here's what I want to tell you, though. If you set the expectations and you enable action, but you don't sustain those results, you don't have sustainment plans in place, then the change will not stick, right? You're going to end up with having a, a lot of artifacts and, and no real change, right? It's not going to be sustained. You're going to have a lot of pockets. You're going to have some excitement here, and then it's going to die off, right? So it's important that you, uh, that you think about that. Now, what if you enable action and you sustain, you have a good sustainment plan in place, but you don't, you never set clear expectations for your leadership around their behaviors, around their habits, around uh, where they're spending their time. Well, in this case, you're gonna have a lack of organizational alignment, right? People are gonna be doing different things depending on what their role is, what department they're in. There's gonna be silos, right? There's gonna be this huge lack of organizational alignment when you don't, have, when you don't set clear expectations around who's doing what and where and when, right? And then the last one is if I set expe clear expectations and I have a really great sustainment plan in place, but I don't ever enable people to actually take action. Well, then I'm going to get, I'm going to, get, I'm going to get mediocre results, right? Of course, there's going to be some change that happens because I set clear expectations and I have sustainment plans in place. But if I don't enable my team to actually take action, then I'm going to have mediocre results. The key for all of you today is to understand that you need to set clear expectations around those inputs, the behaviors, the actions. Uh, the, 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 uh, where your leaders are spending your time, clear, clear expectations, right? Enable them to do those things. Give them the time, give them the, the opportunity, uh, follow up with your leadership team and make sure that they're actually taking action, right? And that's part of the sustainment. Ensure that you have some type of layered audit in place or something to check and make sure it check and reflect, right? Check and reflect and then adjust as needed. Uh, to ensure that you're continuing to improve and head down that, that road of success. And that's what's going to give you a true culture of continuous improvement when you have all three of those areas aligned. So with that, um, I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. Um, I covered a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, and I have, it looks like about, you know, maybe five minutes for questions. 
Uh, so Skylar, uh, should they pop those in the in the chat? Uh, can we unmute everybody or how do we do that? Yeah, we can send them in the chat if anybody has any questions um, or if you'd like to raise your hand, I can um, turn your mics on completely up to however any individual would like to do it. Perfect. Any questions? And I don't okay. see anything in the chat. I don't know if there's anything coming in the chat or not. I don't have anything on my end either. Okay. No questions. Oh, All we right. have a, oh, we did have a raised hand. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna unshare, stop sharing here. Does anybody have any questions about the the uh, what I talked about today with culture, with uh, inputs, the outputs, company continuous improvement, company continuous appearance, anything at all? I covered a lot of information in a very short amount of time. I hope we do. Okay, I'm going to unmute. So it is Alina. Alina, right. you can go ahead. Hi. Hi, this is Alina. Chat's disabled, by the way. Oh, okay. That maybe that's why we're not seeing anything in the chat. That could be why. Oh. That's all. <laughs> no questions, Elena? Well, okay, yes. So right. what do you have uh, a leadership team who states that they understand you've been through this, you know, the discussion with them of the importance of all this, and they still they say they will enable they don't support the enablement by actually doing. They'll schedule meetings over the enablement time, et cetera. Do you have any suggestions for that? Uh, so are you talking specifically about executive leadership or mid-management or both or? Um, executives, but I mean, it could be both. Perhaps you have something that would apply to, to all of that. Yeah. Uh, so my recommendation in, in an environment like that would be to find the the executives or the leaders that are going to support the the the, the direction that you're heading, uh, and and utilize those executives to drive some significant change, uh, and and you know really um, a lot you know what you're going to do when when that happens is you're going to start to create questions. The other executives are going to start to have questions about why are things changing in your area? Why do I see? excitement and and why are things you know why are your kpis heading in the right direction but not mine um and and that could generate some some comments or questions uh you know in that direction so i would say look for the leaders that will come alongside you uh, that would be one thing um i would also say that you know it, it could be helpful to understand why uh if if you if you're trying to drive change in an organization where you don't have upper uh, management uh, support, then that then that begs the question, you know, what, what, okay, now what, right? Because if you don't have upper, upper management support, then I, unfortunately, you're going to have, it's, it's going to be a really rough and tough road. Um, I would say you, you need to find those leaders that are going to support change and really um, buddy up with them. I guess that would be my, my only suggestion. Thank you. Perfect. Well, if anybody does have any other questions, um, they'd like to reach out to me. Obviously, I'm on LinkedIn, and um, you can also email me, Patrick at PatrickAdamsConsulting.com if you have questions. Um, again, I'll just say if you haven't signed up for the upcoming summit uh, by Leaf Frontiers, I uh, definitely would do that, and I uh, look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you to everybody who participated in today's webinar. Also, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. I do apologize about the chat feature not being on. Um, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Again, thank you, Patrick, for attending or facilitating today. Everybody have a great day.